What's cooking everybody? Dave Altizer here with Kino Tika. Today we're talking about the DJI Mavic 2 Pro and the DJI Mavic 2 Zoom. Oh, before we get started, if you're new here and you're interested in the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom, then make sure that you're subscribed and enable that notification icon so that you don't miss out on any of the amazing new videos on these drones. Because we've had the Mavic 2s for so long, we're not just regurgitating article information about them, but sharing real world knowledge that we've gathered over our time using them. The original Mavic Pro took the world by storm with its compact size and image quality. But since the two years that the Mavic Pro has been out, the Spark has come out from DJI and the Mavic Air, which both are more compact and more portable than the original Mavic. The DJI Spark and the Mavic Air were always geared more for consumer-minded people. So with these new Mavic 2s, we can clearly see that DJI is filling in their Pro lineup. In case you haven't picked up on it, there isn't just one new Mavic, there are two. The Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom. The Mavic 2 Pro has a glorious one inch sensor designed by Hasselblad with an f2.8 to f11 adjustable aperture and can record in 4k at 10 bit the Mavic 2 Zoom, on the other hand, has a 2x optical zoom using the previous generation sensor. Because this review includes two different products, let's talk first about their similarities. Both drones now have omnidirectional optical avoidance. Forward, back, down, left, and right compared to the previous Mavic Pro, which only had forward and downward. We actually flew the drone right at a tree, which I know is dangerous because these are the only ones that DJI gave us. We did it anyways for you and we found that the obstacle avoidance worked really well. No matter which direction I came at the tree, the drone stopped every time. I will say, however, because we now have a back-facing sensor, every single time I would take off and land, the drone would recognize that I was standing there, and it would beep at me and yell at me and just tell me to move, and it was just really obnoxious. I wanted to turn that off. The blades on both drones have been updated as well and are now low noise. See? It's really low, the noise. What's really great about these blades is that not only are they low noise, but they reduce the drag of the drone by 19%, giving us an extended battery life, taking us from 27 minutes to 31 minutes of flight time. It also has increased the maximum speed when you're in sport mode from going to 40 miles an hour to now 45 miles an hour. The controller comes now in two versions. This one here that requires you to use your mobile phone as a screen. The other, which we don't have with us, unfortunately, that includes a five 5.5 inch high bright display. I found personally when I'm using my iPhone 10 on this controller, it was really hard to see the screen even in full brightness when I was outside because the screen is just so reflective and it's not just it's just not bright enough. We also have a completely updated video transmission system called OcuSync 2.0 that gives us up to five miles of 1080p transmission down to either your phone or the high bright display. The controller also has an upgraded battery life of up to 135 minutes. Being able to take these thumbsticks off makes this controller even better than the original one. Once you collapse it all the way down here, it just fits in your bag so much easier. Both drones have an updated tracking mode now called Active Track 2.0. DJI has updated their software to combine both the front visual system and the main camera to create a 3D map to allow for much better tracking in a three-dimensional environment. Basically, using that 3D data combined with the 2D data, the drone can actually guess where the subject is going, even if something is obstructing the view of the subject. We wanted to test this new active track mode, so I had Connor run through the trees, and as you can see in this footage, the drone was able to track Connor through the trees all the way up to the dock. I didn't control anything, the drone moved completely on its own, and it stayed locked on Connor the entire time. The Mavic 2s also have a new hyperlapse mode, which is really cool. It has four adjustable modes ranging from 0.5 seconds to 2 seconds. Thanks to repeat task, we can save flight paths and repeat motions with the hyperlapse, meaning we could actually do a sunrise or a sunset with hyperlapse motion throughout the day. These are all great things, but now let's talk about what makes these two models unique. Let's start off first with the Mavic 2 Pro. DJI has collaborated with Hasselblad, the Rolls Royce of camera companies, to upgrade the previous Mavic 
Rabbit Pro's one and two third inch sensor to this new one inch sensor. The M2 Pro camera has a 28 millimeter field of view with an adjustable f2.8 to f11 aperture. The larger sensor also means this drone performs better in low light than the previous Mavic Pro, going from 3200 ISO from the older one to now 12,800. But if you're not aware, this one inch sensor is a big deal. I personally have found that this one inch sensor makes the footage coming off of this thing look less like a ghost. GoPro and more like a real camera. But to make things even better, the M2 Pro records in a 4K 10-bit color space. 10-bit records over 1 billion colors compared to 8-bit, which only records 16 million colors. Which basically means that we're getting much better color and dynamic range. With that 10-bit color space, of course it would go lost if you didn't have a great log profile or other ways to manage the footage in post-production. Luckily, the M2 Pro Pro has a new D-Log M and HLG mode, giving us much more malleability in post-production. And if you want to take photos using this drone, which I guess you could do, we have a 20 megapixel sensor able to take both JPEG and RAW. The previous Mavic Pro didn't have adjustable aperture, but we now have it in the M2 Pro, giving us the ability to adjust exposure using aperture instead of shutter speed. Moving on to the zoom. Yeah! Well, as the title suggests, it zooms. Let's just get this out of the way first. The Mavic 2 Zoom is using the exact same sensor from the Mavic Pro, which means you're not gonna have much of an upgrade in terms of overall image quality, but what has upgraded is the lens. We now have a 24 millimeter to 48 millimeter optical zoom that you can actually control on the ground using your remote. This is great because the M2 Pro and the M1 Pro both had a 28 millimeter field of view. That was it. I never found it to be wide enough or tight enough for most circumstances. It was kind of a weird in-between. We now have the ability to go super wide at 24 millimeters and zoom in to essentially a telephoto mode at 48 millimeters using one drone. When shooting at 48 millimeters, I have particularly found that the footage looks extremely cinematic. The field of view is much more natural to what your eye sees and looks more like a cameraman sitting out of a helicopter using a real camera. Unfortunately, the Mavic 2 zoom is limited to an 8-bit recording recording format, but it does have H.265, similar to the Mavic 2 Pro. Definitely one of the coolest features on the Mavic 2 Zoom is the dolly zoom feature built into the system. Essentially, the software creates the dolly zoom effect that's used in popular films like Vertigo, Jaws, and several others, giving you another shot option that you previously didn't have. These two new drones are awesome. Share this video with anyone you think is interested in learning more about the new DJI Mavic 2 drones. Overall, DJI has given us more than we could ask for. If anything, it makes it harder for you to decide which one to get. Each one serves particular needs and functions. If you need help deciding which one to get, then check out our comparison video between the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom. And hit that subscribe button to be notified for more. Once again, I'm Dave Altizer. These are the Mavic 2 Pros that we've been hiding from you for about a month and it's been killing us. See you next time.